Given the awesome testing and kind of sad results of the 7900 XT versus 6800 XT video and the falling prices of RDNA 2, is there even space in the stack for a 7800 XT? Or should AMD just skip to the 7700 XT, price it competitively, call it a day? All right, so, yep. I, I, I get that because the RDNA 2 is filling that gap at the moment. Yeah, the 6950 XT has recently dropped to, I think, $600 US. So it's been mm -hmm. falling from like $700 to $650 now. It's yeah. $600. Uh, we're not, it's not a, I wouldn't say it's an unusual situation what we're faced with here. Basically, whenever a new generation comes out, they've got to clear out the inventory of the previous generation. So you get cheap graphics cards. Um, I think even things like 2080 Ti's, which held a premium for quite a long time, they fell down when it was made pretty uh, pretty evident that the RTX 3070 was going to deliver a similar level of performance. But anyway, basically, once the RDNA 2 stock, the remaining inventory is all sold out, then the newer generation card comes in and, and fits that slot. Hopefully offer you know, a bit more performance, slightly better price. You can always hope. Uh, and of course, they are more efficient and stuff like that as well. So yeah, I, I think that part shouldn't be skipped. It should definitely come in because surely those RDNA 2 cards will run out and you know, they don't have a, a, a limitless supply of them. Yeah. And I think what we've seen, you know, with the current pricing of the, the 7900 series, that's that's currently $800 plus. And you'd be, you'd be hoping that a card that's like a 7700 XT would be priced more in the $400-ish range. Yep. I know that sounds ludicrous because of pricing at the moment, but mm -hmm. the, even the 6700 XT was $480 mm -hmm. when it came out. So, you know, there is that reasonable gap between $400 and $800. And that card, it's MSRP is actually $900, the 7900 XT. So there's a big gap there that clearly something like a 7800 XT could fill. Mm -hmm. But as you say, it's kind of, you know, it will be replacing a card that may for some early parts, be priced not too differently from a 6950 XT or 6800 XT. And I think that's the difficulty with some of these reviews is that you have to bounce sort of the, the MSRP discussion where, you know, a 6800 XT would have been more like, what was it, $650, mm -hmm. 6900 XT was $1,000 versus the current pricing because that current pricing is not going to stay around forever. That's right. And, you know, even today when we had those sort of cheaper 3090s, 3080s, you know, you now can't buy that sort of product. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it can be a difficult discussion there, but I think there is, yeah, certainly once those RDNA 2 cards sell out, there will be room for something like the, the 7800 XT. Yeah, absolutely. And I see a lot of times in our day one reviews, people say, oh, you know, you've got to stop doing the MSRP pricing. Like, because we, when I break down the cost per frame, I do MSRP first, and then I do you know, typical current retail pricing. And I think getting both of those gives you the full picture. Uh, certainly the best way of going about it, but a lot of people complain about the MSRP stuff. But as Tim's just said, the, the current retail pricing is just that, it's current retail pricing. So as soon as stock dries up or demand for something else increases or whatever, those prices can change or availability can change to the point where it's not available anymore. So having sort of the MSRP and the current allows you to work out where everything sort of sits. Yeah, the MSRP is useful for people as well who aren't necessarily buying into the current market, but are sort of thinking about, oh, well, I previously bought the RTX yeah. 3070 or whatever for $500 US. What can I now get for that same sort of price? Mm -hmm. So having that MSRP chart sort of shows you, hey, you know, it's more, it's better value. Whereas if you're looking at some of the cards today, you could potentially upgrade and get not much of an improvement. So the MSRP yeah. chart is still useful for those, yeah, those sort of things. That's right. Generally speaking, discounted previous generation products are always going to represent better value because they're in a panic to get rid of them before yeah. they're losing way too much on them. So there's they're obviously willing to discount them to a point, but then if they don't sell and they've got them all there, what are they going to do? Sell them for half that price? I mean, it's yeah. sort of an Intel type situation, what they've had to do with the A750. So they want to avoid that. They want to make them really attractive, but not sell them for nothing. And yeah, generally that makes the new stuff not look as attractive. But having said that, the new stuff sometimes offers new features, uh, obviously updated support, uh, more efficient, stuff like that. So there is a reason to pay a premium for the new stuff opposed to the older stuff. But yeah, it means there's sort of something for everyone. You can get yourself a discount or jump on the latest stuff.